All right, everyone, it's time for the next lecture, which is going to be IUPAC rule number two. And this is simply to number the parent chain. Now, this is going to be a slightly shorter lecture because this rule is very straightforward. However, it is very important that you're able to master this because it's the only way you're going to proceed forward to writing the full name for any organic compound that you're presented with. So when you number a parent chain, it's very important that any of the substituents you see there need to be given the lowest number possible. Now, we have to start at one end versus another when we get ready to number these. So you cannot start numbering in the middle of your parent chain in order to give the lowest possible numbers. You have to go to one of the terminal ends and assign numbers starting from there. And you move along the parent chain and you number it until you get to the other end of the parent chain. And the substituents that are there, you take a look at the numbers and if they have the lowest set of numbers possible, then that is the correct numbering system for that chain. So you can take a look at the example that we've set forward here. So take a look at these first two here. We have an example with a nonane. So there's a total of nine carbons in the main parent chain. And you can see that there are two methyl substituents that are coming off of this main nonane parent chain. Now in the top example, we're numbering from left to right. And if you take a look at that, you've got a two and a five for the methyl groups. So if I were to name that, and we'll talk about the actual premise of naming in rule three, I would have a 2,5-dimethyl, okay? Now, if I go to the one below that, it's also plausible that I could number the chain backwards. So just like when you're finding a parent chain, you can go forward, backwards, up, down, same thing with numbering, right? It would hold to reason that I can number one way versus another. Now, if you take a look at this, numbering from right to left would be incorrect in this case. And that's because the substituents would be found in positions five and eight in that case. And two and five are going to have a lower number set than five and eight. So it would be incorrect to number it the way that we have at the bottom there. Okay. So another example, let's see one where we do number from right to left, because again, students can get confused. They're so used to going left to right when they're solving mathematical equations, when they are reading, when they're writing, all of that sort of stuff. We have a very ingrained tendency to go left to right, and you have to open up to all sorts of directions when you're doing this numbering system. So a bit of a simpler example in terms of the structure here, but the same premise holds. Okay, so I have a pentane, and if you take a look, we've numbered it one, two, three, four, five, and in the top example, which is the correct example, going from right to left, in position two is where we find the methyl, so it would be a two methyl pentane uh, versus the incorrect example down there, which would be if I were to call it four methyl pentane, that would not be correct. All right, and just a note here. Um, if the numbering is the same going forwards and backwards, then the lower number will be assigned to the substituent that will come first when writing out the name by alphabetical order. So spoilers, rule three, we're going to be discussing that we list the substituents by alphabetical order. So just to give you guys a brief example here, right, see what we're actually talking about, let's draw out a basic structure here all right and then let's go ahead and say that uh, I'm actually gonna extend this one more so we go one two three four and then here we have a methyl group and then right here we have an ethyl group right so if I go one two three four five six seven eight right this is going to be a four five numbering system now what if I do it in the reverse method and we'll change the color here just so it's very clear All right we have one two three four five six seven eight right so again it's a four five so 
many students will say, well, which way is it? Because in one case, I've got 4-methyl-5-ethyl, and in the other case where it's red, I have 4-ethyl-5-methyl. So again, if you come back up here and you look at this note, it's going to be by alphabetical order that it's prioritized. So if I look at the term ethyl, and I look at the term methyl, when I take a look at ethyl, it begins with an E, methyl begins with an M. So alphabetically, ethyl is going to come first in the naming, and therefore it should receive the lower number or the highest priority in terms of the numbering. Um, and that would make it the red version that we have there. So we would give it a 4-ethyl, and it's going to be a 5-methyl in that case. So again, they would both be 4 and 5, but because we have different substituents here, right, they're not both methyls or both ethyls, we have a separation in the alphabetizing, and therefore one of the numbers is going to be given out to the higher priority alphabetized set. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, that's pretty much all you need to know for rule two, is that you always give the lowest possible set of numbers to the substituents, and if there's a tiebreaker, it's going to go to the one that alphabetically is best suited in the naming. Uh, just one more minor note. Yes, we are going to have an individual lecture on uh, T-butyl and sec-butyl and isopropyl and all of those branched groups. So maybe you've come across that in your class and you were sort of waiting to see that. We will discuss those and the caveats for naming them when we get to that section because it turns out that some of the special branch chains are alphabetized by their first letter and then others are not. And we'll, we'll discuss that when we get there. But for right now, this wraps up the rule two and I will see everybody for rule three in the next lecture.